Recently at a Rocky Mountain Automotive Press test drive in Winter Park, Nathan and I had the chance to compare three cars in a classic TFL mashup review. The BMW M2, the Subaru STI, and of course the Golf R. Unfortunately, the video of the M2 was corrupt. So, without further ado, here is part two where we test drive the Golf R and compare it to the previous video, which was the Subaru STI. Yeah, so we saw this little lonely Volkswagen sitting all by itself. And we always like to do a bonus. Us. See ya. So this time we're doing a bonus of a car that competes directly, I would say, with the uh, STI, wouldn't you? Yeah, you know, actually it cuts the difference between the STI and the BMW. It it's is. like sits right in between the two. Yeah. But price-wise, it's actually cheaper than all those two cars. This is less expensive than yeah. STI? Yeah, this is less expensive, 32. So we're over $22,000 cheaper than the BMW M2 and several thousand dollars cheaper than the STI. $22,000 less. Wow. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let, let's be honest. Roman and I have made it our business to let you know that every single time you ask about a hot hatchback that we prefer, it's almost always the GTI, right? right. I mean, we both think it's yeah. one of the best cars out there. Yeah, I think the GTI. So this is its like hyper brother, the one that has had way too much caffeine and Red Bull. You know, this car suffers from the exact opposite uh, effect that the STI has. That one is two boy hood racer, right. and this guy is too almost too refined, right? It doesn't it doesn't uh, have enough. Uh, cladding, cojones, whatever you want to say. You want, you want it to snarl more, you want yeah. it to be a little bit more exciting to look at. Yeah, I want it to be mean, angry, pissed off, and it's just too, like, refined. It does look like a GTI. I mean, you know, unless you look at the back of it, right? Yeah, you, see you see the, the exhaust. exhaust point. Yeah, and you, you know, you see the little R on the front. Now, did, were you the one who told me this thing can actually go up to almost 200 miles per hour? No, that wasn't me, because it can't. Okay, because I, I was, that was crazy. <laughs> no, no, this can't. Unless you tune it. I'm sure if you tuned it, uh, uh, it might even be regulated. I think it might actually be a limited uh, electronic, maybe like 135. What's really funny is that the speedometer here shows 200. It shows 300 k kilometers and 200 miles per hour. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe if we're wrong, guys, let us yeah, know. Yeah, actually, let us know. Yeah, if you guys know about this stuff, that'd be great. I don't know this car. Now, I did drive the older version of it with the DSG. Yep. And it was great. It was fast. Um, this one has a nicer interior and already has slightly nicer ride. I can tell you that right off the bat. And once again, we're in a turbocharged vehicle. This is a four-cylinder this time. Yep. But not a boxer. And, uh, you know, this is Volkswagen's magic uh, 2.0 liter turbo, right? They uh, put this in a lot of vehicles. Oh, yeah. And they've they been turn refining up, it. They, they turn up the wick in this car, you know, to 11 uh, to give you um, not just a lot of power, but all-wheel drive power. Yep. It's it's a it doesn't feel like the Subaru at all. It's it feels like a very different car. No, no, it's much tighter. The ride is a lot softer, a lot more um, compliant. Compliant. Um, it just feels uh, more grown up. Yeah, the Subaru definitely felt more solid in the corners, like it wanted to hunker down and really get mean. Not saying that this one doesn't, but this one definitely has a much lighter feel. Steering's good. Steering's really good. Yeah, you know, uh, the seventh generation of the Golf is probably one of the best cars uh, out there, right? In all, all its forms, right? There's, you know, there's... The electric one. Yeah, the uh, wagon, the uh, turbocharged 1.8, the... Um, GTI. The GTI, um, and of course, uh, this Uber Golf. There are a lot of trolls out there are like, you guys should do this more professionally. And you know what? We have. We've done it more professionally. Check out the episode of Hot or Not. Yeah. We've got a professional race car driver who's done this from 0 to 60, who's done multiple passes. This is just a fun video that we're doing for TFL now. So this car can also be had with the uh, DSG, the dual clutch. Mm -hmm. uh, and that one has launch controls, and it's it's much, much faster. There it goes. There That's better. Go. There you go. Now you got it. Up to 7,000 uh, RPM yeah. without a problem. Okay, so there you got it that yeah. time. Yeah. Uh, once again, guys, it's impromptu. We're uh, just giving you our, our off the cuff impressions. So um, if you want the real time, go to uh, Hot or Not. Yeah, the slingshot. 
Uh, the, the other thing I would say about the, uh, the Golf R, Nathan, is that uh, this is the kind of car that your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, whoever your significant other is, will actually find very acceptable because it's really uh, a usable, uh, fun car and easy to live with, right? There's a hatchback, which the STI doesn't have. Yep, that's right. Uh, there's great access to the back seats. The back seats are actually very comfortable. The front seats are very comfortable. This is the kind of car you can drive to work, drive to the racetrack, and uh, drive up here in the mountains and have a ball with. Yeah, absolutely. In terms of covering all the bases, this is as close as you're going to get. This or the GTI. Yeah, this, this is a Swiss Army knife. This really is a Swiss Army knife. Very utilitarian. I mean, it's quite a bit of space back there. It's a very squared off roof. It's a very modular setup inside where you can put things down and actually put in some serious cargo in here. Yeah, you know, you said in the uh, M2, I said, you're not gonna get the kids back there. And you were like, hell yeah. I'll yeah, shove them back there, yeah. But you're also a lot more, uh, let's face it, you're a lot more enthusiastic about that car. In this one, you're a little more. <laughs> no, that's true. Right, you're not quite as over the moon about this. So when it goes around corners like that, like I just did there, unlike the other cars that were hunkering down, this one floated up a little bit and hunkered down. So there was definitely a little bit of a different type of feeling. The struts definitely feel like they're a lot softer than the setting. Yeah. So that's definitely right there. I can tell you from the seat of my pants, that's a big difference. Is that a bad thing? Hell no. That means you could drive it every day and be really comfortable. Um, I was going over these same bumps in the Subaru and we was going, go, 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 go. And then inside of the uh, BMW, it was more like a boom, boom. But in this car, you're barely hearing anything. Yeah, yeah, it's it's certainly much more, uh, and this is overused, but it's true, it's much more refined. Yeah. So there's a, a, a sense of, uh, you know, the seven generations of uh, golf that have gone before it to make this car. I would love to put this on a track and see time-wise how it compares directly with the WRX STI. Yeah, I would love that too. We've done it directly with the uh, uh, M2, and it's definitely slower than the M2. Well, yeah. <laughs> but we don't know that number for the uh, STI, so. Uh. It'd be very interesting to find out. This is a very different type of car. So guys, uh, thank you for hanging with us through all three of these cars. Yep. Um, Nathan, in the last video, I asked if it were your money, which car would you buy? So now that we've done the third car, which would you get? Oh, I'd still get the BMW. All right. Money, money is no object. object. Yeah, BMW. BMW. Money is an object. Yeah. Oh, money is an object. Yeah. But this one makes sense. Right? I mean, this one makes sense in so many ways, and I hate to be logical. One of my things that I always practice is, if a car makes you happy, it's a good car. doesn't matter how it makes you happy, but if it makes you happy, it's a good car. And this car, on a day-to-day -day basis, would probably be pretty happy. You know, uh, putting my kids in it would make me pretty happy. Yeah, and, I, I'm with you. I'm exactly with you. Money, no object. I'd get the M2. Money is an object. This is the most affordable, and this is the one that my wife would let me get. Yeah. Actually, yeah, you know what? I think you're right about that as well. Well, so, well, guys, thank you for watching. And remember, check out tflcar.com for more news views and real world reviews. See you next time. Ciao. Yeah, shall we go a little bit faster? Yeah, let's go a little bit faster. All right, here we go. Here we go. It's too quiet. It sounds good, but I want more. You know what I want? I want the sound that BMW was making. Yeah, that I thing was just like, oh, I made you all. And it was like angry German all the time. You know, the one that you want to get, and I hate to say this, but it's absolutely true, the one that you want to get is the one with the DSG. Because that one is like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It's like a motorcycle. Yeah, it's just, it's just boom, 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 the paddles boom. And, you, and I know you could just shoot them off and everything yeah. else, but the feeling of a manual transmission, just, well, a good one. Good. And that one has a good one. It's just really hard for me to replace. Yeah, no, I, with this car, I'd go with the DSG. Okay. Uh, with the other two cars, I'd go with the manual. There you go, fair enough. You heard it here first, folks. Of course, the nice thing about this is it's all wheel drive, so it's very neutral. But the BMW is also very neutral, right? Until you get that at the tail end out, and then it's very controllable. Oh, God, the BMW is theme in mind. I didn't even realize the tail was out until I, I found it, I felt it snap back. This, I mean, you can drift it around a corner if you're on dirt pretty easily. You know, I gotta tell you, it's a shame that, that, that Subaru doesn't give us these cars to review because um, they're really good and uh, we have a huge audience of, of fans and it's, it's a shame because uh, I think we can do this car justice on the track. I think oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. Outback justice off-road. With the professional drivers.